In the spine and the brain, nerves do not regenerate after injury, and this is largely responsible for the lack of neurological recovery. This work comes from a long-standing need in the field of spinal cord injury, where we all try to understand the reasons for regenerative failure. And after several years, we came now to the discovery that an important regulatory mechanism for regenerative failure includes two ubiquitin ligases, and one is actually an ubiquitin-like ligase. There are MGM2 and MGM4. The four, an inhibitory complex with the transcription factor called P53. When MGM2 is bound to P53, P53 levels are strongly reduced in the cell. When MGM4 is bound to P53, P53 cannot transactivate specific targets. When we delete MDM4 or block MDM2 P53 interaction, P53 is free now to activate a number of genes. And what we found is that among these, P53 activates IGF1 receptor by transcriptionally activating it. And now IGF1 receptor promotes the regenerative program. When we brought this to the lab, to the wet lab, we found that genetic deletion of these regenerative inhibitors, so MGM4, MGM2, together with pharmacological inhibition of MGM2, led to axonal regeneration and sprouting of both the optic nerve after crash and the spinal cord after experimental injury. Next, we found that these effects require the transcription factor P53 and the downstream novel target IGF-1 receptor. We identified IGF-1 receptor as a putative P53 target by performing genome-wide gene expression analysis of retrogradely traced retinal ganglion cells after we conditionally deleted MDM4 with the virus to identify specific targets downstream P53 and MDM4. Hey, my name is Marilia and I'm a PhD student and I work for Simone Di Giovanni in Tübingen, Germany. Importantly, we showed that it's possible to enhance spinal cord regeneration and functional recovery in mice by using a class of small molecules called nutlings. Nutlings are a class of drugs that are currently in phase 2 clinical trial for sarcoma. Nutlin 3 enhances the activity of regenerative P53 by blocking interaction with MDM2. It represents a real candidate for translation in clinical spinal cord injury. Were you surprised at all by what you eventually found? Why? Well, <laughs> um, I was not surprised to have a positive result in terms of regeneration and the functional recovery, but I was slightly surprised, to be honest, by the consistency of the findings we had, because different people in the lab uh, looked at uh, functional recovery by modulating this pathway and they were all reproducible and by the degree of the recovery. So this made me very happy and makes me presently hopeful for the future. Obviously, like in any study, there are limitations and I think that the main limitation of our work is that although we aim for translation in humans, we are still far from saying that modulation of MDM4, MDM2, P53 pathways are ready to go into the clinic. The reason is that we use a mouse model uh, of spinal cord injury, which includes a hemisection of the spinal cord, which is a sharp cut of the cord. In humans, it is very rare to have a sharp cut of the cord, but what is typically occurring is a contusion injury, where the bone dislocates and injuries uh, uh, the spinal cord. We are now uh, trying to address the same mechanism and the same approach by enhancing 53-dependent axonal regeneration in the rat model, rat that has a better cavity formation closer to humans, by administering nutrient 3 uh, systemically, like we could do the next in patients. And lastly, we are looking at the possibility of uh, natlin 3 to inhibit also the glial scar, which is the other important component that inhibits axonal regeneration and functional recovery after uh, a spinal injury. 